Greetings, my name is Louise Dente and I welcome you to yet another edition of Cultural Caravan. On this edition we celebrate Kwanzaa, a holiday that was established over 48 years ago. It's a celebration of our culture and our history and Kwanzaa itself is a key Swahili word which means first fruits of the harvest. It was created by Dr. Milana Karinga. Um, and in this celebration, in this broadcast, we're going to bring you to um, Brooklyn, New York as they celebrate the 48th anniversary of Kwanzaa holiday um, with a, a lineup of wonderful artists, as well as the creator of Kwanzaa himself, Dr. Milana Karinga. Let me introduce our guest speaker, Dr. Milana Karinga. Dr. Milana Karinga yeah. is professor and chair of the Department of African Studies at California State University at Long Beach. He is the chair of the organization US and the National Association of Kawida Organization and executive director of the African American Cultural Center and the Kawida Institute of Pan-African Studies. Dr. Karang is also the author of numerous scholarly articles and books, including Kawida, A Question of Life and Struggle, Mat, the moral ideal in ancient Egypt, a study in classical African ethics, selections from the Husea, sacred wisdom of ancient Egypt, introduction to black studies, fourth edition, and Odu Ifa, the eth ethical teachings. Dr. Karang is the creator of the Pan-African cultural holiday Kwanzaa in the Nguzo Saba, the seven principles and author of the authoritative text titled Kwanzaa, a celebration of family, community, and culture. So would you join me in welcoming Dr. Malana Karanga. <laughs> On behalf of our organization, us, and NACO, the National uh, Association of Kawita Organization, we say welcome. You found your family and a peaceful place, and we wish for you blessings without number and all good things without end. And we bear witness as an African people that as our beginning was great and good, so shall our development throughout eternity be if we dare struggle, speak true, do justice, and walk in the way of righteousness. Hotel. Ashe. Ashe. Heading. Heading. This is our annual Founders Kwanzaa message. Our theme is practicing the culture of Kwanzaa, yes. living the seven principles. Practicing the culture of Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa does not drop from the sky. It doesn't grow from the ground. It doesn't float in from the Atlantic. It is rooted in the struggles of our people to be themselves and to free themselves and to build their world in their own image and interest. And at the heart and soul of the celebration of Kwanzaa are three basic things we need to remember. First, the ancient culture, which serves as its source and sanction. Now, when we say that African culture serves as a source of Kwanzaa, that's clear. But we also must see that it also serves as a sanction of Kwanzaa. It self-authorizes. We don't ask permission to have a holiday. No. We don't ask permission to conceive our own world in our own image and interests. No. Yes, we don't ask permission to celebrate ourselves. No. We say it and we do it. And so that is a very important thing to see that our culture is self-authorizing. Our oppressor can never be our teacher. We cannot turn to him and ask him anything serious. That's key. 
The second aspect of Kwanzaa is not only the rich, ancient, and enduring culture out of which it is woven and conceived and constructed, but the Nguzo Saba, the seven principles, which are the hub and hinge on which the holiday turn, which are the foundation and framework for us engaging into practices that anchor our lives, advance our interests, and give us something we can call a legacy worthy of the name and history African. And people say we should practice it all year round. Yes, you should. But you can't practice it just mention it as you pass. It has to be a part of your conversation every day. It has to be part of your thinking every day. And it has to be part of your practicing every day. We say we are American by habit and African by choice. That's right. You can brag about being African and we can have the clothes on. We can have the hair, right? We can even know the names of the heroes and heroines, even though we don't know all the history. But in the final analysis, practice proves and makes possible everything. It's what you're doing that defines you. If you say I'm a teacher, I expect you to teach. If you say you're a doctor or a nurse, I expect you to heal. Rescue me if I'm wrong. If you say I'm a journalist, I expect you to write or present with integrity and truth. I just expect that, right? Otherwise, you're not a journalist, you're a hack. You're a sellable commodity. If you say I'm a preacher, I expect you to preach, not the gospel of prosperity, but the social gospel that favors the poor and the vulnerable. The one by which your Lord says he's going to judge you. That's what I expect. And if, man, rescue me if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm expecting too much. But if you claim, you have to prove. And the only proof and the final analysis worthy is practice. So you practice the seven principles. They become a part of your life. I repeat, they're the hub and hinge on which the holiday turns. Yeah. Then the third element in this triangle of truth and good is the creative, resourceful, resilient, and beautiful people we call African. People who embrace the culture and principles as a living practice and as an essential way of understanding and asserting themselves as Africans in the world. Indeed, the celebration of Kwanzaa reminds us that our culture is a unique and equally valid and valuable way of being human in the world, and it urges us to self-consciously celebrate and practice our culture, live its highest principle, and pass this sacred, sacred legacy on to future generations. This season of Kwanzaa, as we celebrate family, community, and culture around the world, and recommit ourselves to bringing and sustaining good in the world, we find ourselves deeply involved in the continuing quest and struggle for justice for our people. Indeed, it is an ongoing struggle to free ourselves and to be ourselves as black people, as an African people, and to live the secure, good, fulling, and meaningful lives we all want and deserve. It is wrong when we cannot even walk the street mm. yes. without fearing for our lives. Right. It is wrong for us to have to walk in security to send our sons, our husbands, our, our brothers, and all the males of our family and community out and wonder will they come back. We can mourn for other people, but we first have to take care of ourselves. That's right. That's right. Our issues have not gone away because there's another shooting in the city. No. We can pay homage and say, this is wrong. Innocent people shouldn't be killed. But at the same time, that doesn't put a muffle on our mouth yes. when we are to speak truth and to seek justice. We must struggle 
There is no alternative to struggle. Frederick Douglass said it. History has proved it. Without struggle, there's no progress and no promise. So here's the principle. The first principle is emoji. Say that with me. Emoji. Unity. Unity. It teaches us and cultivates in us an active commitment to a caring togetherness. I want y'all to care for each other. You can't just be together. You got to be for each other, not just be with each other. You got to be for each other, and you got to care, right? A caring togetherness in our families and communities is after African people. The principle also fosters a genuine sense of kinship and shared interests of common good with other human beings and calls for a special solidarity with other oppressed and struggling peoples of the world who also engage in righteous resistance to evil and injustice in the world. And it urges respect for the sacred and sacredness and interrelatedness of life and teaches us a profound sense of oneness with the world and an ethical responsibility for its well-being and fruition. Sometimes it's very difficult. That's another thing I should like about the nation, when they always talk about the planet. They was talking about the planet, right? Yeah. That gets us away from ghetto conversations. Yes. <laughs> we are responsible for the world. Do you understand that? Yeah. For the planet itself, and I'll come back to that. The principle next is Kuja Chagalia. Self-determination. Self Reaffirms the right and responsibility of each people to determine their own destiny in daily life, to speak their own special culture truth, and make their own unique contribution to reconceiving and reconstructing society in the world. And this principle commits us to mutual respect for all persons as possessors of dignity and divinity, entitled to equal rights, equal treatment, and equal treatment, and to the shared goods of the world, and for each people and culture as a unique and equally valid and valuable way of being human in the world. The third principle, Ujima. 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 Collective work and responsibility. Collective work and responsibility. This principle teaches us that we are each and all responsible to each other, and we are responsible for building the life we want to live. Can I say that again? Yes. We are responsible for building the life we want to live. And we're responsible for building the caring community, the just society, and the good world we want to live in and leave for future generations. This principle, Ujima, calls on us to engage the problems of our brothers and sisters as our own and to solve them together. And to recognize we're responsible to and for each other in our shared work and struggle to bring and sustain good in the world. The next principle, Ujama. Ujama. Cooperative economic. It teaches us a ethics of shared work and well. Shared work and well. And the good and rightness of cooperative creation and sharing of the good of the world. That's the model of the harvest celebration. It is the cooperative creation and sharing of good in the world. And we must emulate that not only in our conversations at Kwanzaa, but in our practice all year round. Can we create good together and then share it in the most just and equitable ways? This principle also calls on us to give rightful respect and just treatment to workers and to do consideration and care for the poor and the vulnerable. It teaches us to care for the environment and to resist corporate and other plundering pollution and depletion of the earth. The principle of Nia. 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 Purpose. Purpose. Commits us to work for the realization of the collective vocation, an ancient African ethical imperative found in the Odu Ifa. It says we are divinely chosen to bring good into the world and not let any good be law. We humans are divinely chosen then to bring good in the world, but we must choose to be chosen. And we must act then in ways worthy of the divine choice and assignment given to us to constantly bring good in the world and not let any good be lost. Moreover, as Marcus Garvey told us, we must always be engaged in work to restore Africa and African people to their proper place in the world. He says to restore them, quote, as a bright star among the constellations of nations of the world. Uh, a bright star. Not just a twinkling star, but a bright star. The principle of Kumba. Kumba. Creativity. Creativity teaches us to do all we can 
in the way we can in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited. And thus the ancient marching ethical imperative of Saru's tie calls on us to be responsive to and responsible for the well-being of the world and all in it. In a word, we are to raise up what is in ruins to repair what is damaged, to rejoin what is severed or divided, to replenish what is depleted, to set right what is wrong, to strengthen what is weakened, and to make flourish that which is fragile and undeveloped. And we do that first in our relationships. We can't repair the environment if our house is on fire. No. Though do Ifa says that people were asked to sacrifice their grudges, their little petty differences yeah. on their way to war. Oh. But they did not sacrifice and they did not know that the war was already lost before they reached the battlefield. Oh. Keep in mind, we are our own liberators, but we can also be a big problem for ourselves. Uh -huh. That's why Cabral says, regardless of the obstacle the oppressor put in our path, the greatest struggle is the struggle against our own weaknesses, against that in us, which is in contradiction, we say in us, which is that in us which is in contradiction to our value and the choice we've made to free ourselves and be ourselves and build a good world we all want and deserve to live in and to pass on to future generations. <laughs> the last principle is a principle of Imani. Imani. Faith. Faith. Faith teaches us to embrace the beautiful and unbreakable face of our forefathers and foremothers. An unbreakable face they had. Otherwise, we would not be here, y'all. Right. We can't forget those before. We have to pay homage to those who walked and worked and sacrificed before us. And here, I want to just say that. I want us to take just a moment. I know we've done it the day before, but I want to just take this moment for me and Tim Moya and our organization, us, to pay homage to a soldier who would not walk away from the battlefield also. Our brother, Watusi, Brent. <laughs> so my parents and their parents before believed that eventually the good they held to would eventually triumph. Yes. That justice would triumph in the world. That people would have well-being. That humans would flourish. And they linked their faith to hard work their hope to righteous struggle, and their prayers to transformative practice. This is why they had a grounded faith, right? Because they linked their faith to hard work. They didn't just believe, they got in there and worked. And they linked their hope to righteous struggle. It's good to hope, but if you don't struggle, it's hopeless. Because power, Frederick Douglass said, concedes nothing without demand. And even when you're not struggling against them, we're struggling against that in us, which was put there by living in a sick society. And they also link their prayers with performative, with transformative practice. They didn't just pray, they knew they could get that, but they had to get up and go to work. Other words, prayers are in vain. That's what King said when King said, you got to stop turning God into a universal bellhop. Taking baggage, you have to carry. It's your baggage. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm, this is it. This faith I talk to you about and leave you with is a faith founded and forged in millennia of righteous and relentless struggle and tested and tempered in time of increased oppression seeming hopelessness, and in times of delayed victories and setback that would have defeated those less steadfast and determined. And yet they continue. Because this faith that our forefathers and mothers had shelters no illusion and knows from insight and experience that practice proves and makes possible everything. And they know too that only righteous and relentless struggle will redraw the map of human history that leads to a hard-won world of kindness and caring, mutual respect, justice, peace, 
well-being, security, substantive freedom, and rightful flourishing of every human being in the world. And thus it is on us black people to hold our ground, to build on and expand our gain, and continue to push the better lines and lives of our people ever forward. For this is ever our duty, to know our past and honor it, to engage our present and improve it, and to imagine a whole new future and to forge it in the most ethical, effective, and expansive way. Head is our Kwanzaa. Happy Kwanzaa. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this broadcast, and we continue to encourage you to tune in, to write, and to tell a friend. But until next time, Louise Dente saying thank you.